My name is Jim with Juniper, and <clears throat> I got really interested in testing OFDMA after seeing uh, what Peter McKenzie did at uh, WLC Prague last year and, and here uh, in, in uh, uh, previous conferences. Uh, but I wanted to uh, do it differently, right? There's a lot of different ways we can uh, run tests against OFDMA. I was curious about downlink performance. I was curious about if we try to give OFDMA the conditions we're told it's supposed to be good at, what will that look like? Uh, so that's what I tried to, to, uh, to lab up and test. You know, the first thing that we, you know, we need to think about is what are our real expectations for this technology, right? I think you know, back in the early days of Wi-Fi 6, some of the marketing around OFDMA was not helpful. <laughs> you know, we, at least me and I know others, had the impression that if a network was all Wi-Fi 6 clients, it'd be OFDMA all the time, and it would be awesome. That's not the case, right? OFDMA, OFDMA only happens within the context of EDCA, right? The AP has to win the channel that way, and then it can decide what it wants to do next. <laughs> and what it decides to do yeah, is not always intuitive. The AP can choose to, to keep you know, using single user mode. It can choose to do, to do multi-user MIMO, probably won't, <laughs> or it can do OFDMA. And a lot of the times, single user mode works great, and that's what the AP does, even when there's a lot of congestion. Uh, and part of that is because with you know, 1024 QAM, AP can send a lot of uh, packets uh, really fast. And so if it's emptying, emptying its buffers really fast, we don't need to do anything special, right? It's when those buffers start to fill up, it's when there's a lot of small frames uh, that, are, that need to be transmitted to a lot of different clients that now we start to you know, meet the conditions for OFDMA. And that tends to be, in real-world networks, burst conditions, you know, not, not uh, something that happens all the time. So we know that throughput tests we've seen, OFDMA doesn't win those maximum throughput drag races. Uh, and uh, in normal environments, not like this network, but I think carpeted office space, we've got five to 10 clients on an AP, and once in a while, they need a little bit of data here and there. The OFDMA doesn't have a, a major role for those networks. And of course, it, with mixed FIs, it makes it even less likely that you'll see it. But just to dig into why OFDMA tends to lose uh, maximum throughput drag races, the standard has already uh, really optimized uh, single user throughput. That's always been a big goal of, of what we do with Wi-Fi, whether that's something we need or not. Uh, and so um, with frame aggregation and really long transmit opportunities, an AP can just fill the air with, with bits. When we do OFDMA, some of the subcarriers that we use have to get um, repurposed as guard subcarriers uh, between the resource units and uh, data isn't modulated onto them so the total uh, number of bits on the channel is lower. So let's talk about the, the lab testing I did. So I, I took a Wi-Fi 6 AP, a fast switch, I had 11, uh, 11 AX Wi-Fi 6 clients and to 10 of them, in the downlink direction, I sent uh, 4,000 packet per second UDP streams. I picked 4,000 packets per second because that's kind of in the middle of what you see when you load a web page. Sometimes it's a lot more, sometimes it's less. I went with 4,000. 
And then to another client, I sent again in the downlink direction uh, three streams, audio, video, and screen sharing to simulate a, a Teams call uh, with QoS markings there. And I tested this on, on an AP with Wi-Fi 6 turned on versus it turned off. I don't have a switch just for OFDMA, so uh, you know, I couldn't totally isolate that. And then I looked at different channels with. So, so, you know, one of the things I did that's a little different is I used iMix packet sizing on those, um, those web page streams. Uh, and, you know, if you're familiar with firewalls, you've maybe seen some of this. But this, is, this uses smaller packet sizes, more typical of what we see on the Internet, like real Internet traffic flows tend to be distributed uh, in packet size like this. And these are pretty small packets. So to me, this is kind of what OFDMA was designed to help with. So what did I see? In general, Wi-Fi 6 was better. Of course it is. It's next generation of Wi-Fi. In 20 megahertz, it was a lot better, although I didn't see any downlink OFDMA with that channel width. In 40 and 80, I saw more and more OFDMA. Uh, of the, all the downlink PPDDUs in 80 megahertz channel, 34% uh, were OFDMA, which is interesting. You know, that's, we talk about six gigahertz being somewhere where we'll see more OFDMA because every client and AP supports it. Another reason for that could be because we're gonna use wider channels. So that was interesting. When I look at the Teams call results, the packet loss uh, for Wi-Fi 6 was great, less than 1%, but it was pretty good for, for Wi-Fi 5, 3%. If you look at those channel utilization numbers, I'd expect to see <laughs> uh, far worse results. Uh, so, so there is some benefit there. When I look at latency, this was interesting. Wi-Fi 6 had a little bit more latency on those uh, 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 audio video streams simulating a Teams call. Five milliseconds, so not a problem. I don't know why that is, right? This is supposed to reduce latency, but my speculation is that it's sort of doing a balancing act. It's got this best effort queue that's just full, and these occasional packets coming across the voice queue, so it's maybe holding those voice packets an extra millisecond or two to help with that best effort queue. I don't know. And then throughput was a little bit better, reflecting the difference in, uh, in packet loss. So interesting. So uh, to wrap up, <laughs> I did this without QoS a few times, uh, and it was a mess, right? So, OFDMA, Wi-Fi 6, they don't replace the need for, for QoS, particularly on, on uh, real-time audio and video streams. Um, and there are uh, switches in Teams and Zoom to get DSCP onto those packets, uh, which is beneficial. OFDMA is definitely here, right? With a wide enough channel and enough clients and the right client mix, you'll see a lot of it. Uh, but I think it's one of those technologies that it came out, uh, we saw what happened in the real world, and now we're seeing changes in the standard, like multi-RU, and next generation chipsets that are going to handle it even better. Um, so I want to just encourage anybody else that's thinking about this, do your own tests, let's do it with 50 clients and see what happens, and uh, we'll see. Thanks. Thank you.